This would be my first time pulling a head uh, on an actual vehicle. I've done it on a bike before. The reason I'm even in here is because my wife's car, the timing belt pretty much rounded off at the bottom where the crank meets uh, the belt. And so the crank was spinning, but the top end wasn't spinning. And so basically I ended up getting some bent valves. You can look right here. So this cam is tight and this cam right here is completely loose. It's right at 200,000 miles. And unfortunately we bought the car used. It didn't have any indication that the belt was the timing belt was uh, on, on its way out. Uh, I thought we would have gotten lucky because the cams were still in time, but the bottom end wasn't. So obviously, yeah, the crank's still spinning, it just destroyed it. So the head right now is completely loose. So the only thing left is for me to lift it out. Get this lift. So I can have uh, something to put the, uh, the, the head on when I lift it out. Harbor Freight, by the way. kind of crazy uh I don't see any deformities on my pistons where I feel like the piston might have cracked when it slammed into that valve because we got I think all of our exhaust valves are still open so let's look at the uh, head yep they're all <laughs> they're all stuck open see that all of my exhaust valves are stuck open yeah I'm gonna take it to a machine shop and again, I'm gonna take the cams out. I've never done this before, so I gotta figure out do they want the cam, they probably don't want the cams in, but I gotta figure out do they want the valves still in because I'm gonna need a whole new set of valves. And uh, while it's there, I'm gonna get them to lap them and everything. Yeah, I can do that myself, but I would rather them do it. It'd be different if it was on a bike. I could do that myself, I would chance it, but being it's my wife's car and I don't wanna have to do this again for another, I actually make sure that the belt doesn't break. I'm gonna change it every 75,000 miles now because I know how to do it. You can see that one look like it might be kind of half, not fully closed. That one doesn't like it's fully closed. So yeah, you can actually see right there, that valve is not fully closed. That one isn't fully closed. I mean, I can just rip this thing off. I'm trying to be a little gentle with it, right? I don't want to destroy it because I want to see what damage it may have. I don't see any obvious failure points on here. What was happening though, um, we did have some issues with some coolant disappearing. Um, had various hoses just breaking down, but I can see in here, there's, I don't see the walls of these cylinders don't look like, you know, wet. So we weren't getting any uh, ex uh, fluid going through the exhaust. So having that white puff of smoke at the, uh, the tailpipe. But yeah, heads out and it's my first time doing it and hopefully I can get this thing, no. Getting stuff out is easy. Getting stuff back in and putting it together and making sure everything's right. That's a different story. It's been about a week and a half. Took the head to the machine shop, got them to uh, test it, mill it, and uh, figure out why you know I couldn't get compression. Found that we had eight bent valves, eight on the exhaust side and three on the intake side. But we got the head back right here, and I um, already got the cams in, already got them torqued down and everything. And you can see how they basically milled it really nice. Flip this over, you can see all of our new valves you can see this super clean surface so each one of these you can see that valve is these two are actually open because of the position of the cam while i was in here went ahead and replaced the thermostat this entire housing is plastic so i was like well i'm already in here went ahead and replaced it with a metal one this side i also replaced the uh variable valve timing solenoids so i actually cracked the, uh, the housing on one of these and so they're really easy to go ahead and get out and replace so i was like i'm already in here might as well replace it. And also we got new seals in here for the, uh, the camshafts. With the head surface, I did what most people do. I took a razor to it, obviously as gently as I could and just scrape up all the old gasket. Now it looks like it's not perfect because you know there is some staining in here, but if you pull your finger across here, this is actually super smooth. It should be fine, but my uh, good friend Corbin did give me a recommendation. We have this uh, copper spray gasket 
and basically what it does fill in some of the imperfections that may come from um, you know scraping the uh, the block or the head and it fills in some of that gap I actually got a little bit of a uh, amateur paint skills right there got some runs but don't look at it it'll be all right <laughs> um so we're gonna put this on and then we should be good but actually if you look right here these are all of the bent valves <laughs> eight bent valves three bent valves clean the surface like 50,000 times I'm gonna sit that on there it's like that it is orientated correctly because if not that hole will not line up and I also did take the recommendation to drop my pistons down so they're not fully at top dead center because when I start messing with the valves what might happen is that um, you know the valves might bump the pistons as I'm turning it over so the pistons are actually a little bit further probably like <laughs> four wheelers they're about 45 degrees off so when it's time for me to actually turn the engine over clockwise to top dead center it should be where it needs to be All right, this is the uh, exhaust side house clean and everything so they went ahead and cleaned all that off for me and also they cleaned the housing area for the thermostat and what's interesting about all of this is that it costs 375 to get the head uh, milled tested and everything and also including the valves so that was including the price of 11 valves so I think it's a pretty good deal so I didn't have to deal with it and so you know, if I have to do anything else like motorcycle, hopefully I never have to come back into this thing. But if it's a motorcycle, I can take it down there and have the same thing done. So I've actually never done anything like this before. Just a matter of a uh, YouTube University. All right, we finna send it. There's one. Since we're dealing with um, a head, in most cases they have something called torque to yield bolts. So when you torque a bolt down, a lot of times it's done. But on certain instances, you need to stretch that bolt. And so that's where torque to yield comes into play. Well, when you stretch a bolt, you don't want to retorque it because there's a possibility that you're going to stretch it and break it. So in this case, all 10 of the head bolts and the various other bolts had to be replaced. So I got new head bolts. Don't cheap out. Just get some. Just go ahead and get get the new head bolts if you can afford it, of course. But if you, I don't want to be. You have to go so far into this thing. I don't want to like, you know, cheap out and then I snap a bolt off into the block and now that's an entirely different scenario. So these bolts cost me like another like another twenty five bucks. And um, I also had to go to Harbor Freight because when you torque this thing down, you got to torque it in sequence. But then you have to do, you know, a certain torque, then ninety degrees. Then, a nine, then 90 degrees again, and I think you had to do that three times, and then you do 45 degrees. So rather than eyeball it, I was like, look, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a torque wrench. So this is a um, Harbor Freight digital torque wrench, so and it has torque torque angle too, and um, it's a 3 8 and that's what I'm gonna use to get this done. So I'm gonna drop these in. I've already cleaned out the holes because they, each of these holes for the head had a bunch of oil in them. So if I did not do that, and I screwed those in and torqued it down, it probably would have hydro-locked the bolt and I would have had another situation. So first head job, not fully done, but the head is back on and wish me luck. Hopefully this thing comes together and it doesn't leak. All right, so hooking up the mass airflow sensor, everything's connected, got the serpentine belt on, time and belt, uh, replaced the crank pulley, like the pulley gear for the time and belt. Uh, because I rounded the piece off because <laughs> I didn't mount the pulley for the serpentine belt on the crank I lined it. I didn't torque it down completely and it came loose and basically the pulley was oscillating So with that I do not have the engine mount holding the uh, engine to the uh, at least this side to the uh, engine bay So it's still supported by the jack. So we're gonna start the car
probably because I connected that mass airflow sensor. That's my fault. Oh, yeah, it's gonna spark. Yeah, it's probably because I disconnected. I was playing playing with that without taking the battery. Let's see what it does now. I do have to do one more thing. So I got to go back in here. This radiator tube, I replaced it because the old one had some, I'm not gonna be able to see it, but it had some nasty, like a uh, debris. There's a spider in there actually. Hmm. Um, basically the hose started breaking down. And so I didn't want to, you know, start the car and then all that deposit ends up in the water pump. Cause I didn't replace the water pump cause it's not leaking. And uh, there's absolutely no point for me to do that right now. So I just decided to keep it where it's at. And um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, once I drain it, I'm gonna take this hose back off or put a better clamp on here. I hate these clamps because they're really hard to, uh, especially this one down here. This one was an absolute nightmare to get to. You can see it's not fully on. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get one of the ones so I can like take a screwdriver to it and, and uh, make it easier to deal with. So anyway, I'm gonna put the engine mounts back on, drain the radiator, put actual antifreeze in it because it's getting cold. And I think we're done. So first head job on a bike, sorry, on a car is uh, done. And um, hopefully I don't have ever, ever have to do this again. So yeah, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Catch you next one. Peace.